Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Uh, this is just a demonstration video uh, for an all-in-one bench tester kit. It's only going to be sold in kit form because it takes uh, quite a while to put all of the components in, so I won't be selling them assembled. But let me tell you about it. Uh, it's got an onboard display with an LM317 uh, an L3, uh, LM317 linear regulator. Uh, as you can see, the output displays uh, the maximum, which is the input voltage, down to uh, about 4 volts. And I say 4 volts because it can actually go lower than that, but the display can only handle up to about... Well, the, if the display is empowered at, at more than 4 volts, the display turns out. So it can go down to 1.25 volts. It comes with a uh, 12 volt well adapter, 1 amp. Uh, there is also a regulated 5 volt output, so there is uh, LM317 output uh, and uh, the 5 volt output, regulated 5 volt output by our trusty 7805. There's also a signal generator on board, um, and that can you can configure it as you go to output a range of 1 to 50 hertz, uh, 50 hertz to 1 kilohertz. 1 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz, and last, lastly, uh, 10 kilohertz to 500 kilohertz. And that's based on an NE555 timer, and you can change the ranges using this dip switch, and I'll get to that in a minute. Now, another cool feature of this is you have a buzzer that you can, you can, uh, you can use. All of the outputs are right here. If you put 5 volts on the on the buzzer pin, it's labeled on the board, the buzzer will, um, will turn on. Um, there is a the signal generator output. There is a ground and regulated 5 volt output on the rail here, also labeled. Um, and there is also a uh, there are also these two buttons. Now you might think, what do these two buttons do? One is a debound switch. S2 is a debound switch. So look at the LEDs here. Debound switch, software debouncing. Now S1 is a toggle switch. And those outputs are labeled on the board as well. So I thought that was a nice, uh, a, a nice addition to this: is you can interface with your circuit or your Arduino, toggle something on or off, or you can uh, use a momentary output, debounced, that turns on when you hold it down and off when you let go. So I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of the. Uh, 555 timer, and I'm going to make an assembly for this video for this very soon. I'm hoping to have it up at engineeringshock.com and electroniclessons.com uh, within the week. So uh, give me a second, I'll conf and I'll show you the uh, the 555 output. I forgot to mention a few things. You can turn off the 555 timer to save a little bit of power by uh, removing. There's a jumper on the board, a three-pin jumper labeled on, com, and off. If you have the jumper connected, uh, shorting COM and uh, and on, the 555 timer output is enabled. Um, if you place the jumper between COM and OFF, the output of the 555 timer is disabled. Now you can also mess with the reset pin of the 555 timer because at the output, uh, again we have seven pins of the output and one is labeled 555 RST. And if you pull that line low, if you connect that to ground or, or a sinking uh, uh, a voltage sink output, a c open collector output, then you can disable it using your external test circuit. Yeah, it's up to you. Um, anyway, so there are two onboard potentiometers labeled RA and RB. Now, if you're f familiar with 555 timers, uh, RA typically uh, uh, RA and RB work together to change the frequency in the duty cycle. So I'm in the, the cur I'm currently in the one to 50 hertz range and to do that what I need to do is go to the dip switch and uh, push the level 4 or uh, dip switch to the on position and if I want to we'll go through a couple of the different ranges but first I'm just going to fiddle with RA I'm just going to take a small s screwdriver and I'm going to change the frequency Right now I'm turning it left, and the frequency, as you can see, is is changing. If you have to, if you bring it too far left, you have to uh, start playing with RB, and I'm going to start doing that right now.
There we go. As you can see, it's getting much faster. And you can turn it up to uh, 50 hertz. So what now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off uh, dip switch 4. I'm going to turn on dip switch 3. And this is the 50 hertz to 1 kilohertz range. And again, I can I can fiddle with it. I can change the frequency by adjusting RA and RB. There, I'm making the frequency. I'm lessening the frequency by turning RB right. I'm making the frequency longer and turning it left. I'm making it faster. And I'll play with R1 again. So, look up the 555 timer. You can learn a lot about how you can manipulate the duty cycle of the signal and the frequency. So, again, if I turn off dip switch 3 and I turn on dip switch 2, I'm in an even faster range. I am in the range of 1 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz. And if I turn off dip switch 2 and turn on dip switch 1, I'm in the fastest range, which is 10 kilohertz to 500 kilohertz. So there you have it. Um, now, one cool thing is if I um, if I connect 5 volts to pin 1, which is easy to do and I will do it right now, um, and you can use your Arduino to do this, you can turn on the buzzer. So uh, I'll actually stop it and I'll show you. So pin 7 is 5 volts and pin 1 is buzzer in. So imagine a digital signal coming from your Arduino. Pretty neat, huh? There's a transistor driver to uh, maximize the uh, volume of the buzzer. So all, even if you have a weak signal, you're not using that signal to power the uh, buzzer, but rather to trigger a re uh, uh, transistor driver that drives it at uh, max power. So again, LM317 variable output uh, comes with a 12 volt adapter, on off switch, uh, regulated 5 volt output, both have grounds, an output with uh, a buzzer uh, enable, 555 um, output, 555 reset option, uh, out S1, which is output for S1, the button, uh, out S2 is pin 5, pin 6 is ground, pin 7 is 5 volts, regulated 5 volts. So easy interface with your circuits, uh, has one debounced, uh, or two debounced switches, one is momentary, one is latching. Um, and again, a 555 timer signal gener generator, uh, square wave output, many different ranges, easy to uh, play with. And of course the display. So uh, I'll be making an assembly video for this. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Sorry if I rambled on there a little bit. I've got a bit of a cold. It must sound kind of irritating. Anyhow, take care and thanks for watching.